On the 6th of April, 1917, the United States Congress declared war on Germany. Since U-boats had already visited America, anti-submarine warfare finally got attention. With new airships on the way, the government laid out new lighter-than-air facilities in Chatham, Massachusetts, Montauk, and Far Rockaway, Long Island, New York, Cape May, New Jersey, Norfolk, Virginia, Key West, Florida, Coco Solo, Panama Canal, and later in San Diego, California. A standard, fireproofed hangar and hydrogen plant were constructed at each new facility and also at Pensacola. On the 7th of August, the new DN-3 was delivered to Pensacola and took its place in the floating hangar. Reorganizing, the first failed airship was redesignated A-1, and the new Scout dirigibles were reclassified as Model B. The awkward floating hangar was moved ashore alongside the new, larger, two-ship hangar. Goodyear engineers attached twin rudders and fins to some B-ships. Connecticut aircraft ships had a single tail fin, but with European-style ring-like suspension. Goodrich envelopes featured patch-style forward attachments and twin lower fins. All of the cars were supplied by Curtis Aircraft. On Halloween, the U.S. Navy took delivery of the airship B-14. B-16 was delivered two weeks before Christmas. Over there, the Italians had introduced an improved M-type airship that could reach 15,000 feet. During action on July 23rd, M-2 was shot so full of holes it settled into the sea, drowning half the crew. An enemy submarine was attacked by the C-5 on the 22nd of October. Soon after, the British C-2 met the first American convoy approaching the Scilly Isles off England's southwest coast. Detecting and bombing a U-boat, C-2 was given official credit for having saved the convoy. It was November 1917 before the first Americans landed in England and made their way to Cranwell near the North Sea coast, where commanding officer and seven chief petty officers supervised 25 enlisted raidings. The detachment trained hard until just after Christmas when their first airship, SSZ-23, arrived. Other Americans went to Arcachon in southwest France also landing in France, other U.S. Navy crews trained in French airships. The airship personnel also served in Italy at Ciampino near Rome, the major Italian naval airship base. On the 15th of November, the C-5 dropped four 100-pound bombs on a periscope. On the 7th of December, the crew of the SSZ-16 sighted a German sub, and the U-boat opened fire upon the airship. Its wireless operator returned fire, sweeping the deck of the submarine, but the U-boat submerged and escaped. By the end of 1917, the British had more than 100 airships in commission. On the 20th of December, scouts were recalled as storms arose, and in the foggy darkness, the landing SSZ-7 ran into the moored SSZ-10, its fin slicing the envelope below. One pilot died, and several men were injured in this worst accident in the history of the Naval Airship Service. In contrast, Royal Flying Corps pilots in airplane training and operations were being killed in crashes at the incredible rate of 100 per month. Early in 1918, the Americans completed trading at Cranwell and moved to Howden to begin operations. Their first flight had the Americans dropping Victory Lone War Bond leaflets over the nearby Humberside town of Goole. The war came to them shortly thereafter when a Zeppelin bombed a nearby village. The French assigned the Americans AT-1. The distinctive airship arrived at Pembeuf on the 30th of January, 1918. The first American patrols and French airships were made in February. The U.S. Army's 2nd Balloon Squadron was first on the French front lines that February. During the war, the 2nd made a total of 321 balloon ascensions, totaling more than 530 hours. even shot down one enemy airplane attacking their balloon. Pambuf became a U.S. Naval Air Station on March 1st. The station was to supplement the patrols and escorts near the mouth of the Loire River and to give protection to troop ships at sea. Three weeks later, the Zodiac Vedette 3 was assigned to the Americans. 
On the 12th of March, the French AT-0 out of Le Havre spotted a submarine northwest of Dieppe. It was the seven-year-old British sub D-3. The submarine crew fired rockets, per the recognition protocol. The French mistook it for hostile action and opened fire with their machine gun, forcing the sub to dive. The AT-0 crew lined up and dropped bombs with deadly accuracy. The D-3 sank. All 29 men aboard perished. On March 27th, the AT-1, commanded by U.S. Navy Lieutenant Fred Colbert, completed a 25-and-a-half-hour convoy escort. The crew's record flight was officially commended by the French Minister of Marine. Across the Channel, the British Rondelle on the Americans' SS airship was repainted with the U.S. insignia. The Americans made their first patrol flight from England on the 16th of April. It lasted six hours. More action followed. On the 18th of April, SSZ-34 dropped three bombs on an oil slick, with a trawler and SSZ-35 assisting. Wreckage rose to the surface. On the 22nd, SSZ-30 bombed a suspicious oil streak, and on the 25th, SSZ-23 assisted a British submarine in distress. On the same day in France, the T-2, named Capitaine Causin, had a hydrogen valve stick wide open. The T-2 struck the water, and two men were thrown into the sea. American commander Louis Maxfield jumped into the water and swam to the rescue of the two men as the T-2 drifted ashore. When Maxfield struggled with their heavy flying clothing and boots, Lieutenant Frederick P. Colbert jumped in and all were saved. Colbert was awarded the Navy Cross. Maxfield was recommended for a life-saving medal and T-2 was returned to service. On May 15th, the U-115 became the first enemy submarine to attack shipping in United States coastal waters. In the coming weeks, four other U-boat crews operating in the same area boarded merchantmen, took crewmen captive, seized valuable cargo, and set charges to destroy the ships. They shelled fleeing vessels and cut undersea communications cables. American anti-submarine efforts were fruitless. Inspired by the large European non-rigids, the Americans designed a completely new twin-engine airship designated the C-Type. As B-Type production drew to a close, contracts to build 30 C-Type airships were awarded to Goodrich, Goodyear, and the Burgess Works of Curtis Aircraft. The plan to get the British airships 20 miles closer to the Channel was started the 1st of May, when Howden's two mooring outstations, Kirk Leatham and Lothorpe, were hewn out of the forest and made operational. SSZ-32 began patrols from Lothorpe on the 30th, joined by the Americans in SSZ-23 on the 18th. Lieutenant N.J. Learned was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross for destroying a U-boat with the SSZ-29. On May 18th, Pilot Lieutenant Juan Ofarina bombed an oil slick from SSZ-51. Ensigns A.R. Houghton and Edward B. Packard flew their B-ship out to look for the U-115 on June 15th. They failed to return. Since two hydro airplanes had already been lost in that sub-hunt, the airship was thought lost as well. Two days later, the schooner Luther Little found them afloat on the sea, 45 miles south of Sandy Hook, New Jersey. The airship and crew were towed back to port. Back in England, on the 18th of June, the North Sea 3 was towed behind HMS Vectus at a speedy 30 knots. The following day, NS-3 conducted a water landing next to the Vectus and did a crew transfer via whale boat. On the 21st, the NS-3 sighted an oil slick, suggesting a U-boat. The airship and a destroyer attacked the target together. The North Sea-class airships were extensively reworked with new direct-drive propellers. As on other airships, the gunner doubled as cook, using a stove plate welded to an engine exhaust pipe. In-flight repairs on the engines were aided by the accessible motor mount design. The U.S. Army's 8th Balloon Squadron shipped out in January and reached the front lines in July. In August, the squadron's balloon was repeatedly hit with bullets and shrapnel, but did not burn, as Lieutenants Ross, Holland, and Temple parachuted safely to Earth. On September 26th, the balloon was attacked by a German airplane and burned. Lieutenants C.J. Ross and H.B. Hudnut jumped from the balloon. Hudnut landed safely, but the burning balloon fell on the parachute of Cleo Ross, igniting it. Ross was the only balloon observer of fatality due to enemy action. Another balloon was flamed in October. 
the Army's 1st Balloon Squadron had deployed on the front, and on the 25th of July, their first balloon was set afire by German aircraft. Lieutenant Thompson parachuted to safety. The 1st Squadron would make some 7,740 observation flights during the war. Ensign Philip Barnes and his SSZ-23 crew endured a record 26 hours on one channel patrol. Barnes, later commanding the American detachment, received the Distinguished Flying Cross from the King of England. On July 19th, W.C. Briscoe, W.B. Griffin, C.A. Upton, and their B-ship failed to return to Chatham, Massachusetts. The airship lost her rudder near Highland Light, and the crew free ballooned the ship with occasional use of her engine all afternoon until the bag lost pressure. Brought down to the water, the ship floated for 24 more hours. A passing steamer brought ship and crew back home. Before the first twin-engined American C-Type even flew, 20 improved D-Type airships were ordered by the U.S. Navy in July. On the 8th of July, the British C-14 sighted a periscope three miles in front of a convoy. Two other sea ships were summoned and apparently drove off the U-boat. C-24 flew a record 24-hour mission the next day. A week later, C-15 dropped two 65-pound bombs on a target. The Navy's evaluation ruled an enemy submarine was badly damaged or destroyed. On the last day of July, 1918, several coastal airships were searching for a suspected U-boat when the C-25 was lost. It is believed the U-boat attacked and destroyed the airship, but no U-boat crew claiming an airship made it back home. The HMS Furious had been given an airplane ramp and a flat deck. During the summer, SSZ-59 and SSZ-60 made several landings on the flat, aft deck. The second week in August, while the SSZ-39 was establishing a 51-hour endurance record, the R-27 dropped two bombs on a submarine. On the 17th of August, the U.S. Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Franklin D. Roosevelt, stopped by Pambuf and was given a ride in the AT-1. The AT-13 was accepted by the Americans on the 30th. Days later, in England, a crewman was using petrol to clean the SSZ-23 car when another technician switched on the airship's radio equipment. The SS ship and the rigid airship R-27 were consumed in the resulting inferno. On the 21st of August, the C-9 attacked the U-boat that had torpedoed the French steamer Rouang. A violent explosion numerous air bubbles, and a patch of oil were observed. C-2 and C-23 arrived and took over, but no other wreckage was seen. The U.S. Army's 12th Balloon Squadron was ordered to the French front on the 1st of September. One balloon broke away, and its two observers, Lieutenants Tate and Hinman, were captured by the Germans. The North C-9, flying in thick mist, was fired upon by a German U-boat. On the 16th of September, an SSZ under Ensign N.J. Learned, called in surface ships to sink the UB-103. On the 23rd of September, French Lieutenant Abessard, commanding SSZ-21, bombed a surfaced U-boat. The sub shot back, making nine holes in the airship. The sub escaped, and a torpedo boat towed the stricken airship to shore for repairs. On the 29th of September, the R-29 made a direct hit on the UB-115 with a salvo of 120-pound bombs. Official recognition was given to the entire crew of R-29, the only British rigid airship so commended. On October 1st, the AT-13 was flying convoy patrol when a submarine opened fire on the airship. With the airship's cannon out of action, the AT-13 had to retire. The final French airship taken over by the Americans, the VZ-13, was accepted the last week in October. Back home, the first operational flight of an American twin-engine airship came on the 22nd of October. The C-1, commanded by Marine Major Bernard L. Smith, flew from Wingfoot Lake in Ohio via Washington, D.C. to Rockaway, New York. The Aero Club of New York awarded Smith and Ensign W. L. Hamlin, the co-pilot, their Medal of Merit for this flight. C-1 would later establish a record by flying to Key West, Florida. The larger and more capable new American C-types took their places alongside the B-ships already in service. Each standard steel hangar would house one B and one C-type airship. The 17 B-ships would fly more than 5,000 hours in the Great War, although no airship could claim they attacked any of the five U-boats that raided the American coast.
In Italy, the semi-rigid concept again proved its worth in November, when F-5 landed safely in spite of serious damage. In all, the Italian Navy's seven large and 17 small airships flew 1,355 scouting missions, covering more than 157,000 miles. The casualty rate was relatively high, with seven ships lost, along with 13 men killed and 10 captured. The Army's 3rd Balloon Squadron had arrived in France in February and was on the front lines in July. One balloon was attacked and burned on September 14th, and the observers parachuted safely. On November 10th, their balloon was attacked by two SPAD airplanes with American markings. The observers landed safely, but the jump was the fifth for Lieutenant Phelps, making him the ace of balloon observers. The guns fell silent on Monday, the 11th of November, 1918. The next day, British Air Marshal Sir Thomas Elmhurst flew airship SSZ-73 in triumph under the landmark Manet Suspension Bridge in Wales. From January to November 1918, there had been only nine days that weather conditions prevented British airships from flying. During the last 17 months of the World War, British airships provided escorts for a total of 2,210 surface vessels. They also accomplished over 9,000 anti-submarine patrols. The total distance traveled by British airships during the World War totaled more than two and a quarter million miles. English newsreels would show the victorious troops headed home from France. One showed an SS ship making a landing on a British submarine to exchange intelligence as they praised the airship's wartime achievements. A total of 215 British airships were constructed during the war, the largest number ever operated by any one country, and their relatively modest cost was repaid many times over by the safe arrival of essential war cargo at British ports. Wartime performance analysis began even before news of the armistice reached all of the far-flung combatants. Records indicated that nearly three-quarters of the 1,665 war flights by Zeppelins were reconnaissance, not bombing raids. In total, German airship commanders reported over 100 sightings of enemy submarines. British submarines were believed sunk by German Navy Zeppelins L-9, L-10, L-54, L-63, and the Chute Lance No. 3. The last American flight off France was at Brest on December 13th, when President Wilson's convoy was met and escorted. Demobilized on January 26, 1919, Continental air stations reverted back to the French Navy. The day after Christmas, 1918, a B-ship crew commanded by Ensign T.E. Matham left Key West bound for Tampa, Florida. Returning after flying nearly 700 miles, they had established a new endurance record of 40 hours, 26 minutes. The exploits of just a few German submarines during a few months off America's shores had accounted for 91 ships, totaling 167,000 tons, with a loss of 435 lives. Most of the ships were destroyed within 200 miles of the American and Canadian coasts. If it could be developed further, the anti-submarine airship would surely have a secure future.